period before the treatment, I would say I was a whole different person. Um, for like, I reached a point where like I wake up in the morning and everything. The first thought that comes to my head was, "Why are we even alive? Like, I prefer not being alive," which is like identifies as a suicidal thought. And I, I was like thinking about it was all I had in my my mind. And it's crazy that I actually reached that point because I never expected that I would. Because I was like abused, like physically and mentally by my older brother since like I ever could remember. And then there's the war, like I lived years in the war. There's like nothing about me that makes me feel good. And um, that was like, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. There was like no starting point for depression. I think I had it since like years and years ago, uh, but when I started noticing like the suicidal ideation, I was like, this is not normal. I don't think like normal people wake up in the morning and they're like, I would rather be dead. That's, that's not normal. So um, basically I, I did ask for help in Sweden. Um, that was like in January, uh, I went in January, 2020, I went to uh, like a psychiatrist I know all the side effects about SSRIs. I didn't have this like solid thought that I am, I don't want to take it, but I felt I had a really bad feeling about it. I was like, I don't want to take it. And he's like, so we don't have other options. What do you want? And I remember mentioning ketamine to him. And I remember him like saying this very, like in a very rigid way, like we're not going to give you ketamine. And I just felt, okay. So this is hopeless. So I also found this clinic and um, I, emailed, I emailed the clinic and I got like an email like I think in the same day. So I came here I think not that like a week after we talked um, and thinking about my first infusion I would say there was like some elements that did not um, make it very effective since uh, ketamine is like very dissociative mm. so I when I was laying down and Agni my therapist was like holding my hand she was like trying to talk to me and take me through everything that makes me feel depressed I was forcing myself not to take in the experience or like I didn't give up to ketamine to take me in the experience so it was like acting sober and talking I think this helped me but I mean it helped me think about everything that made me depressed but it didn't really like affect me as much as the second infusion when I just decided to listen to it, like just put on my headphones, listen to Coldplay. I was, I told Agne like, I'm just gonna listen to music. And she was like, okay, I, I will just be here. And she still like held my hand through all my infusions, which was really nice. Ketamine made me like disattached disatta from my the suicidal thought is like I could see I could literally see like my depression fading away. I was seeing everything mm -hmm. everything differently. It was completely like I was a completely different person mentally uh, before the second infusion and after. I think after the second infusion, I felt like I don't really need anything anymore. Like I can handle myself. I even had like migraines and I stopped having migraines for like three months straight. So something physically changed in my brain and I don't know what that is. But it was just great because I felt more normal. Yeah. Yeah. How did you experience the, the EMDR? I didn't really believe it was going to work until it did. <laughs> I, until I completed all the sessions, I had already cried a lot. I had like I had to talk about really tough stuff. Um, since like the ketamine made me more disattached to these depressive thoughts, my brain kind of processed them better after the AMDR. Um, I can just there was like a space in my head, like mm -hmm. free space in my head. Can you tell me the I think that was like the smoothest one mm -hmm. because I didn't have to think about anything. There was like, I wasn't like in a K hole. I, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just nice. I would just sit there, relax. At the beginning, I think um, the, the impulses were a bit like annoying, but 
uh, eventually like I got used to it and it was it was really nice I, uh, the first like week I didn't really feel that it was helping um, but the second week I changed a lot mm -hmm. uh, yeah I really trusted Isabella and she seemed like very professional so um, I was like okay I can give in the experience I think it like it takes a lot for a patient to actually trust the mm -hmm. process you went back to Sweden, I think, after two and a half weeks? Or yeah, um, so I went back to Sweden. I remember my dad picked me up from the train station. And um, he, he, he literally told me, like, from the first hour, he's like, you're acting different. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're more, like, jolly. You're more, like, energetic. And then I was like, yeah, well, I feel fine now. And then for, for the next, like, month, Everyone I met was like, wow, what, like, what happened? You haven't, and I haven't told people about it yet. It's just like, I feel fine. I just, I started, I felt fine, really. So, and I think it was noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any other treatments in, uh, after this time? No, and I don't think I need to. Um, so a year and a half, and I still feel fine. I think my anxiety is like kind of still there or like it's back but I think it's just like a natural response to everyday life like if I have like an exam and I didn't get the results it's I think it's normal to be anxious <laughs> yeah but I didn't I don't really I don't mind anxiety because everyone has anxieties but I was just afraid that the depression would come back which it didn't I know people are like scared of like trying psychedelics or whatever because they don't want to become a different person, but you just feel more normal, you just feel mm. more grounded, I'd say. And I didn't need the, like, I didn't really need any help afterwards, and I still don't. And I'm, like, very ambitious about life, and that was great.